What's up? Hey, there. hey, man, how's it going? It's going good, man. Are you okay if I'm vertical or you want me to turn it? Yeah, no, you be vertical, be horizontal, sideways. I can be all those. <laughs> that's, that's, man, that's not an issue for me. I'll just start stretching real quick, and then I should be able to get into some very uh, pretzel-like situations. It'll be a fun uh, Zoom. Yeah, you love the yoga, right? I love just fitness in general, man. It just, uh, it's, it's my, it's kind of my meditation, my church, even when I'm in there and I'm kind of ground and pounding out like agility training and what have you, like, uh, that's been such a huge part of my life now of the last like 10 years. It just kind of kickstarts everything inside of me on a daily basis. How, uh, how has that been affected here during uh, quarantine? Has it been easier or, or more difficult? You know what, man? It's put me in a position to really focus on not being complacent, like with my level of fitness. So it's actually, uh, it's actually really engaged me to go at it harder and to not fall into the, I don't want to call it a trap, but to kind of fall into this, like you'll plateau at a certain point if you don't start yeah. like pushing yourself in different ways. We all in fitness community, they call it pushing through walls. Um, so, uh, I think the quarantine in general has really put a microscope for myself personally. Um, a lot of things have been really magnified in my diet and the way that I conduct myself in the way of my physicality, my mental, my physical health. Um, it's, uh, I think that it's making me a more, uh, versatile, uh, human being. Yeah, well, you know, I remember at the very beginning of quarantine, I, I was uh, on Instagram and I saw you join up with the Nothing More guys. Yeah. And uh, you you were like, I don't know how to work any of this stuff. And now here we are. And I think you're probably pretty good at all of this uh, technolo technology stuff and, and uh, you know, getting in and talking with people and doing these things. So you've been learning. Yeah, man. And, and I've always been that way like I, i'm not afraid of new things i'm not afraid of going into a situation and not knowing anything about a certain scenario or subject or whatever is presented in front of me i've never been the type of person that if i couldn't figure it out in the first like few minutes i get bored of it and i'm over it and i just move on um i think that sometimes people will forget especially the newer generation something that i try to teach my son which is you know look it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything. <laughs> and it's about, you know, practice does make perfect, but it's also understanding that it's also in life, life is constantly evolving and it's not gonna stop kind of throwing things at you. And the, and the goal of that also is to not, get you know, to not get frustrated with the brick wall, you know what I mean? And what I yeah. mean by that also is, don't try to run through the wall. The wall will probably win. Um, but if you figure out a way to navigate either under it, over it, or around it, uh, that's when ingenuity becomes a part of your personality. Um, and it, it can make you a stronger person by learning new things. I mean, it's very interesting too. It takes 21 days for a human being to develop a habit. And Right now, there are a lot of people that have developed a habit that I will be very vocal about um, that I can't say is a good habit right now. But you see what happened over two weeks ago, and I wish, man, I wish it was under different circumstances. But the fact of the matter remains that when it comes to what happened to George Floyd, social distancing went right out the window. Yeah, yeah, I did. And that's proving something to our quote unquote leaders or the people that do not have a plan right now that do not forget that, especially in this country, on the front page of the Constitution, the largest lettering on that document is we the people. We the people. Don't yep. lose sight of that. Because I think the people showed the rest of the world, hey, um, you're not going to be able to continue to keep us in the dark for much longer. Figure out what you want to do. Let's compromise here and figure out how we can get back to living life together.
Yeah, and I think the uh, thing about that too is the rest of the world joining in and, um, you know, the, yeah. the, the stuff that was happening around the world. I don't remember that happening ever for any, oh. any issue that we have here in America per se. Uh, it's clearly something that is, is something that happens around the world. And it's, uh, it was amazing to see that come to light. Yeah, and you know what, to be honest with you too, I mean, now where we're at is, I think people are, I have a difficulty with this sometimes because we've been all put into a situation where we're all on the same playing field right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I, I, I put out a, uh, a one minute soundbite from Denzel Washington uh, a couple of years ago when he was uh, asked a question on a red carpet. I think he was, uh, I think it was the premiere of the movie Fences and media was asking him about, you know, how do you navigate and what do you think about this whole new uh, world? Remember, this was like three years ago right. of uh, fake, fake news. And, and he was making the point of, you know, well, that's, that's really the question, isn't it? Is it fake? Because a lot of the media right now is looking at the idea of, doesn't even matter if the story is true. I just need to be first. Doesn't matter if there's any relevance yeah. to it. I just need to be first. And that is something where you have to start calling BS at a certain point in time, because is anything that you're reporting actually true? Because I don't know about you, man, but the last four months has been extremely eye-opening when it comes to mainstream media. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because, it, and, and from all sides, not just one side of the aisle or the other, but but all of them, because the goal uh, for them is to is to get the rating point. And in order to do that, you, you don't always, you know, get to the real, I mean, real journalism is hard to find these days, I think, anyways. And I wonder if that's because they're just absolutely terrified. And I'm talking about the people that are writing the articles, because that's something I've also noticed here lately. Like you're just rehashing the same story over and over and over and over again with the same narrative. People are moving on. You know what I mean? Like, right. Well, and the people are just getting to that place where they're like, we don't believe you anymore. Like we don't, yeah. everything that you're trying to tell us, it's the same story for the last three, four months. We need to move forward. You know, I've often said this, human beings, we are at our best when we need each other. And that could not be any more apparent than right now. Look, it's a virus, okay? We get it. But I am shocked, and it's starting to get a little bit better now, but we were just talking a moment ago, and we've known each other for a long time. You've been very supportive of Shinedown from yeah. day one. People need to know that about not only yourself at the station. You know, we adore you, all the men and women that work there, everybody, just in general, we have a relationship with each other and what have you. But, you know, I see that it's changing a bit more, but these media outlets need to need to be expressing more about, you know, your immune system. Do you want to know how you can be strong and how you can be healthy and how not only are you going to be able to handle the coronavirus if you were to get it along with the other 150,000 viruses that you will come into contact with on a daily basis is your immune system so change your diet if it's crap if you've been thinking about starting a workout program start it you're not going to start on a monday and be able to do a decathlon on sunday you got to be able to do it in steps wait what and you know, it, it, that's a big thing right now that is not being utilized is give people knowledge and power. Let me just be somebody, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a degree, but I can be very, very bold. I'm a guy that in 2011 to 2012, I decided that I was in terrible shape and I did something about it. And, you know, in that first year between 2011, and 2012, I lost 70 pounds. I started to learn how to eat better. I started to learn how to exercise better. And I'm here to tell you, I got stronger. Uh, yeah, and then you, uh, you've done an amazing job at that. And, and you're absolutely right. I just don't think that there's, there's not um, 
You know, there, there's for, for whatever the purpose that they want, it's not a good story that, you know, what you're talking about right there is, is that side of it doesn't make a good story because it's not going to, uh, it's not going to draw viewers or, or people who want to see that. And, and I think that's the real shame of it because ultimately, as long as that's the bar, um, yeah. you know, it's going to be hard to, to get the stories in there that really matter. And so, uh, you got to find, and, and now as a regular everyday person, you have to search out, uh, the real stories that are out there so you can make, uh, an opinion about it. You can come to a conclusion on something you don't know anything about. Something though, that I will be very vocal about, and this has only been, you know, really in the last couple of days that I've thought about this. Um, but you know how you hear about the second wave and, right. and the fall and what have you. You need to be concerned about the second wave of potential anarchy. Because if you keep it like this and you try to keep people inside and you try to keep people away from each other and you push this on, not just people in the United States, but globally, you need to be worried about another uprising. So our leaders, quote unquote, need to start presenting leadership and a plan because people will just not, I just don't see us continuing this lifestyle. I think a lot of people, if you were to ask them, what kind of a life do you not want to live in? Or what kind of a world do you not want to live in? They would say, well, I definitely don't want to live in a world where my life has been altered to where if I'm going to go out on a Saturday night that I don't know what I'm going to wear, but whatever I wear, I need to make sure that it matches my mask. Right. Because I don't want that. That doesn't need to be the new norm. This is my opinion. And I know there'll be, there'll be media outlets that grab this and, and, and they'll probably go mess with our words. But me and you, we're, we're on the same page here. And, uh, you know, I'm just being, I'm just telling, the, I'm just telling it like it is, man. That's what the mass majority of the world, that's how they feel. They don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to keep doing this. They don't want to put people that are compromised at risk and they don't want to, they don't want people to die. Nobody wants somebody to die. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Life and death are a part of each other. What I'm saying is that the media needs to start giving people encouragement and tools and start talking about more of the positive things that are happening because this groundhog day of the world is ending and we're doomed it's just ridiculous at this point yeah doom culture doom culture is what it's ridiculous what I and yeah. and the mass majority of the world they don't buy it and they don't want to live in it yeah you're right uh it's time to get living and, yeah man uh, it's like and, in the Shawshank redemption dude get busy living or get busy dying yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, that's one of the things I'm doing here. Um, you know, part of the reason I wanted to, uh, to, to have you on and just uh, bring some attention to uh, trying to uh, raise some awareness and some, some money for Alzheimer's Association. Absolutely. Uh, um, Absolutely. You, know, you know, I don't know, do you have a personal connection to Alzheimer's at all? You know, what? for me, uh, personally, not in a direct level. Um, you know, the guys in my band, uh, Barry and Zach, and, and Eric, uh, they have a bit more uh, of an a little bit more of an acknowledgement from from their side. I mean, I remember, um, you know, one thing that I've watched over the years. You know, Brad Paisley, the country singer, has been very vocal about Alzheimer's with his wife and um, what they're doing in their campaigns. Also, you know, once again, Seth Rogen, who is along with his wife as well. She's been very upfront about, you know, bringing awareness to Alzheimer's and also in regards to Parkinson's and dementia and all these things that are factors. Um, you know, for, for me, I've always looked at it as science is constantly evolving. And what, more, more so than not, a lot of what I see in this culture nowadays too, because there's so much mass media that, you know, sometimes it, it becomes this, this element, not to go back to what we said a little while ago, but you know, your nutrition and your health and being active, you find out later on that a lot of this can be either stopped early or that um, if you implement exercise, and you implement, you know, that blood flow and your nutrition, things like Alzheimer's, uh, 
I don't want to say that they can be eradicated, but it can be helped from a, a natural position as opposed to taking a substance or a pill or some type of a treatment. But I think, you know, especially with like what Michael J. Fox has done from the beginning, you know, making an acknowledgement of Parkinson's because he, he has it and just leaps and bounds where he's come from, from that point to now, um, you know, just watching how other people present these very difficult subject matters when it comes to Alzheimer, dementia, Parkinson's. I think that the world is, is not sweeping it under the rug. I think that they're starting to talk about it more. And, and but they're also realizing that just movement is very, very important to all these ailments and some of these diseases where it's like, hey, blood flow is really the key here to regenerate your cells and to you know, clear your mind. And, you know, I, I, I might have gone in different directions with that question, but more so than not, what I've seen when it comes to Alzheimer's is that the, the research is showing that just mobility is a major factor in uh, conditioning yourself and, and that not being something that, uh, it, it's, better th it's better now, there's better research now than there was 10 years ago. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, uh, research is important. One of the things, too, is, is they're learning about research with Alzheimer's and dementia uh, and music and how uh, it's, it's one of those things that uh, really kind of draws an interesting line where it doesn't, um, you know, that's a part of the brain that it doesn't really touch Alzheimer's. And so uh, that is an important thing. So, you know, for me, uh, my mom passing two years ago from Alzheimer's, she would play the piano and she would still be able to play physically. She couldn't do it near the end, but, but her, her mind was there and she could, you know, play the notes. And, and that is such an important thing. So uh, that's one of the things for me, uh, just, you know, engrossing myself and, and really, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people out there who, who you know, they'll listen to the radio or they like bands and they, they listen to music. Not everybody has music as a lifestyle. Uh, with a lot of the people that we know, obviously, you're in the business, I'm in the business. So it's part of our lifestyle. And um, that's one of those things where I'm like, that's an important factor for me to help people realize you need to spend more time listening to music and, and doing things and getting out and, and seeing live music when we have it. Right. I think that, uh, and I've said this many times before, I think when we've spoken to each other in the, in the past, I've, I've brought this up. There's an, there's an incredible quote by a philosopher named Frederick Nietzsche. And the quote is, without music, life would be a mistake. And I've always loved that quote because music is such an inherent part of not only our culture, but really our livelihood. Because if me and you go and we watch a movie, that story is presented on screen. If I give you a book and I say, I read this great book, here it is, I think you'll enjoy the story. That story is already there. So it's, it's already been completed from that aspect. And so, or if you go to the theater and you go watch a play of some sort or what have you, but music and songs for that matter is something where those songs, and any song for that matter, can be whatever you need it to be at that moment in time for you. You know, it can ignite you. It can put you in a different headspace. It can give you confidence. It can take, you know, a situation that could be very, very dire for someone, and then the right song comes on at the right time, and all of a sudden that person is like back in the game. You know what I mean? Because it's, it, it focuses them. It gives them, it inspires them. It makes the hair on their arms stand up. And it can be at any moment in time. A, I've always said that a song is written, but it is always evolving because of people. I, you know, I, wrote, I write songs because it's cheaper than therapy, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, uh, but but it, it, it's interesting, man, because once we write a song in Shinedown and we release it to the world, it doesn't belong to us anymore. It belongs to the public and it can be whatever it needs to be at any time for that individual. Yeah, um, and speaking of which, we need to talk about the vault, your Shinedown vault. Uh, how many songs like Atlas Falls you got laying around in this vault that we haven't heard? Because, uh, you know, it was really cool what you did with that song, releasing it, and, and um, you know, the- uh, Thank the you for of, supporting uh, it. Yeah, you bet the charity, well, it's a great song. So, you know, it's, it, to me, it's like, how many of those great songs left do you have just kind of sitting around collecting dust? Here's the, the, the terminology of that. Uh, the answer to the question is, 
we have a lot. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily think that they're collecting dust, but, and, and the reason I say that is, um, we write a lot of songs when we're in the process of writing a record. And just because a song doesn't make the album, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad song. It just means, don't get me wrong, we've written a lot of bad songs. Um, but just because we write, one. well, they're in there. There's a reason <laughs> you haven't heard them. We've not let okay. them be known. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Uh, or at least we've tried. Everybody has an opinion. Um, but you know, just because the song doesn't make the album doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad song. It may just not have been right for that particular record. And so, you know, in regards to Atlas Falls, one of the elements about that song, it was written during the Amaryllis writing cycle. Um, and I always remember too, like myself and Eric and Zach and Barry, we always had a kinship to that song. Um, I think in a lot of ways it didn't make the album because that record was such a very cinematic record that we felt like we had enough. And uh, we always knew the song would hopefully see the light of day. I don't think that we realized that it would be to this magnitude. Yeah. Um, but I have to give, you know, once again, that song doesn't belong to us anymore. It belongs to the entire world. And I have to let people know, you know, not only the station with you, my friend, but also, you know, Shine Down Nation, uh, we're approaching the $400,000 mark of the money that we've raised for direct relief in regards to the Atlas Falls t-shirt and what you guys and girls have done in regards to uh, your acknowledgement of direct relief and why direct relief is so important because they were here before COVID-19 and they'll be here after COVID-19 because they really are an organization uh, that they're the Calvary, my man. I mean, that's, that's what yeah. that company is. And, you know, it's interesting too. People have asked me about the song. They've said, well, when did you find time to like remix it and kind of make it sound more like today? And, you know, when did you have time to get in the studio? And you ha obviously you had to kind of tailor the words to what was going on now. And I said, no, like the song that you hear today is the same song as it was eight years ago. Crazy, crazy. But, there, uh, you know, but that's the beautiful thing about music, man. It's one of the reasons why they say it's timeless. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of which, uh, you had mentioned here recently an interview about uh, Smith & Myers, your guys' first, uh, you know, uh, album ready to be mastered and what kind of things I think most of the stuff we've gotten from you guys before is, is covers. So what can we expect an original form from Smith and Myers? I have to be honest because I, uh, <clears throat> I turn into a, a kid when uh, I, I, I talk about this project because, um, and, and it's something where I'm not going to use the quintessential terminology of like, I can't wait for everybody to hear what we've done. Um, the fact of the matter is we decided to, for people that don't know, in 2014, we did a uh, digital release, two EPs, both five songs. And it was the audience, the Shinedown audience, uh, you know, for, over the years, they'd asked us like, hey, would you ever do, because of the Skinner, uh, cover. They've said before, like, would you ever do any other covers or would you ever make a record that was like, you know, of cover songs and this and that and the other. And I've, I've made the point of, well, Shine Down isn't a cover band, so yeah. probably not. But then Zach came to me with the idea of like, okay, well, what if it wasn't Shine Down and we just did something for the fans and allowed them to actually pick the songs that, uh, that we would cover? And so that's essentially where it came from. So in 2014, we like, we had an open call on Facebook of just any song that you would have ever, you know, want me and Zach to play cover or something like that. And it just like was crazy the amount of songs that came in. And then what we did is we used a program with Facebook that like gave you an algorithm of the, the highest percentage of those songs. And so we condensed it all down to 20 songs. And then what we did was we put two songs Monday through Friday up against each other the first week, and then the fan base voted on. So whatever song had the highest percentage, we marked it. Second week, did five, you know, uh, 10 more songs and to pick what that would be. So of the 20 songs, the fan base got to pick the ones that they wanted. So, uh, and then we did two EPs, put it out as Smith & Myers, never thought, it, never thought anything else of it. And then all of a sudden, there was this request to, would we do some shows? <laughs> just me and Zach. And so 
we went out and did a 22 day run in 2017. Um, and they were between like 1500 to 2500 capacity buildings, which I thought was way too much. I was like, there's not gonna, there might be 300 people, maybe. And right. all of that sold out. I was literally shocked. Um, and so when it came into, you know, earlier last year, we started talking about the development of doing another Smith & Myers record. But instead of just doing another record with 10 covers, what about if we were to write 10 originals? And so long and the short of it, um, it is completed. Um, we are in the process right now of putting together how we are going to present it to the world. Um, so I'm going back to, uh, I wish I could tell everybody right now what the dates are because we just confirmed all the dates of the release on everything, but I can't share that with you just yet. Um, but uh, I think it's going to blow people away, man. It's, uh, w you know, we, we definitely swung for the fence on it and uh, it's not what you think it's going to be. Um, there's a lot of diversity to it. Um, and it's something that myself and Zach are really, really proud of. What do, uh, what do what Eric and Barry feel about it? How do they feel about Smith and Myers? Oh, they're massively supportive of it. They really, they, they, they've looked at it in, in so many ways as, you know, it, it's always going to be an extension of Shinedown. You know, it's two fourths of Shinedown. Right. But yeah. You know, the four of us, we share everything with each other. But, the, you know, Barry and Eric understand what Smith & Myers is and, and why it's something that me and Zach feel that we want to do it because the audience um, has asked for it. So, um, I mean, to be totally honest with you, I mean, we've sent material to to Eric during this process too, just to get his opinion on things. Like, you know, do you like this? Is that a good direction? What do you think about this? And I mean, he's been very upfront with us about kind of what he likes, what he thinks could be kind of worked on a little bit better. Same thing with Barry too, you know. Um, they're, they're, they're very, very supportive of it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, look, it, it, there's always gonna be a connection to it, you know. Yeah. Um, but it, it is different than shine down um it is smith and myers it's not something that you could i don't know if we could do something like this and call it shine down does that make sense yeah yeah it does and, and I, I mean we can't wait to hear it uh i remember when when you guys started doing the those uh those cover songs uh we were like and you started doing some live performances there on the east coast we're like hey we need to get these guys out here and, and hang out a little bit so uh hopefully this next round when things get back uh back up and running uh with the world we can get you guys out here because uh because we miss you and, and i appreciate you man spending some time with us today i also wanted to say thank you to you too my friend um it really does mean a lot to me, you know, giving me this time today. It's great to see your face, man. I look forward to seeing you in the future way sooner than later. And also just to everybody out there in regards to, you know, the deep dive tour. I know that it's been a bit of a bummer for everyone that we did end up having to cancel it for the year. Um, and the reason why is we had already postponed it twice and we just did not have an acknowledgement that we were going to 100% be able to have it happen in the back part of the year, even as you got to October, November, and December. Um, hopefully, we're actually seeing, and it's out there, people, we're seeing research today that is actually showing that there is a possibility of live shows uh, this year. But when it comes to the deep dive tour, I just want to let everybody know, we just didn't want to hold on to the money. You know, we're, we're, we're all in a, in a very unique economic situation right now, and we just feel that it was respectful. So if you did have tickets for uh, the deep dive or you had VIP, um, you can go to shinedown.com to find information about that. You can also go to livenation.com uh, and, and, and look for uh, the deep dive tour and Shinedown Nation and also Shinedown. It'll tell you if you've not gotten your money back or you've not gotten your money back from uh, VIP, just go to those sites and uh, because it's a full refund on every single side. Um, and once again, we, we just didn't want to keep people's money because we just didn't know if, you know, a third time postponing it, trying to reschedule it, it just didn't really seem fair.
Yeah, well, you can only do what you can do and control what you can control. So uh, totally get it. And uh, you know what? Uh, you know, it'll happen. You'll be out there touring one of these days again. That's for dang sure. Yeah, I can go ahead and tell everybody right now, um, it, it's looking uh, massively uh, very real and very hopeful into 2021. There are a lot of people behind the scenes right now that are implementing all of the safety factors and sanitation and things that um, are a good thing actually in how the new normal is gonna be with mass gatherings um, in these bigger facilities and smaller facilities. Well, you know, just making the point of, you know, looking at the fact that, you know, sanitation needs to be looked at, cleanliness needs to be looked at more right. just for the public in general. Um, so we're, we're coming back. Don't, don't, don't worry. Like we're, we're being respectful of everything, but you know what? Uh, we, we are all going to be together again. What I would say to everyone is stay healthy, stay motivated, stay focused, listen to your body, give your body uh, the nutrients that it needs. Give yourself, um, you know, knowledge is power and stay confident and stay focused. And we are going to get on the other side of this and we're going to be stronger for it. Love the positivity as always, man. Thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate, Appreciate it, brother. It. You Thanks, better have man. a good one.